You're driving. All right. Gotta put it on uh, forward there. We're ready? All aboard. <laughs> you better hold on. Tell him you better hold on. Good job, buddy. Good job, Stone. High five. Nice job. Biggest thing that I recall is the doctor always talking to us about how big this baby's gonna be because she has so much fluid. Hoping it's a boy and it's gonna be a big boy and play football one day. When Stone was first born, he was perfect. But immediately after we took him home, he started to lose weight. It was difficult getting him to eat and then also being able to keep anything he would eat to keep it down. And then he had a situation with his eyes where they'd go back and forth, and we just knew that something was wrong then, and we were just trying to find answers. The most difficult thing to go through is no one can give you an answer. We just kept traveling to different doctors. All those therapies and no diagnosis really cost a lot of money. So we were quickly going into debt, a lot of debt and we were stressed out all the time. Wolf was working all the time. We couldn't find answers. We just couldn't find answers. It took basically almost two and a half years to get an answer of some type which Stone had. I will never forget, I was sitting in the car when they called me to tell me that he tested positive for CFC syndrome. CFC syndrome is a rare genetic condition that affects 200 to 300 people worldwide. It causes heart issues, facial abnormalities, and impairs swallowing. Many with the condition do not survive infancy. At the time, the oldest known individual with CFC syndrome passed away at 26. So we didn't have a good prognosis. When I knew what Stone's situation was and how it was going to end, I had to regroup and kind of, you know, be the man of the household and be there for my wife, be there for Stone. Stone has already beaten the odds. At 18 years old, he struggles with verbal communication and cannot swallow solid food. All of his nutrients come through a precise formula he drinks from a baby bottle, something his family credits for prolonging his life. But his energy and positivity make him no different than any other happy teenage boy. Come here, Stoney. Stone likes to be physical as far as like he'll wrestle with you. He's constantly harassing me you know, splashing me in a pool. You know, I don't treat Stone like a, a, a young man that has a disability. We go out, we have fun. So this just gives an opportunity to do all the things that we would normally do, running, walking, dancing, all those things. He can do it all right here in the water. And there's resistance to the water, and so that builds up his muscles. Stone, work. I don't live in fear. Uh, I've embraced Stone, uh, what his legacy is going to be. You know, I tell people all the time, don't, don't feel bad for us. I, I feel bad for the people that get a phone call tonight that their son or their daughter was killed by a drunk driver. Because those families have hopes and dreams of their son going to prom, going to college, getting married, having kids. A long time ago, I was told the cards I had. I feel bad for the people that are blindsided. Listen. I have a great situation. I embrace it, and you have to, because there's just, I, I refuse to be negative. That is, good job, that is a good, job. good, job. good job, huh? Once you kind of come to the realization that things aren't gonna be the way you'd planned, we made a decision that we were gonna make Stone's situation a positive thing and help other people. We don't ever want anybody to ever go through the things we saw, waiting lists for doctors, waiting for a diagnosis, trying to get therapies, trying to get help. We decided to start a therapy center and start a foundation. The stone that the builder refused will always be the cornerstone. As a parent, you have all this information, but it's hard to metabolize that and then be able to act on it and look for ways to serve the needs that are there. So we started No Stone and Turn Foundation with the full intent of helping other families through the kinds of challenges that we had and more. I mean, we've been several places where 
people are on a nine month waiting list to get their son or daughter assessed for learning disorders. That should never happen. That's something we're proud of, is being able to give families the tools they need and hopefully the therapies they need so that way their kid has a chance to be successful. No stone unturned, that's gonna be Stone's legacy. You know, just like having a son that played football, uh, Stone's legacy is gonna be no, son, you know, no stone unturned and we're proud of what we've been able to accomplish thus far. Let's go play some football. Set, go. Here we go, ready? Here it comes. There you go. Put your hands up. He's here because he's supposed to be here. And he's here because he does make a difference in the lives of other people. And he's here because he loves life. He loves life and he's loved. Whoa! Mom is the worst receiver ever. Is that funny? <laughs> there you I got go. one. It takes my breath away when I think about it. Our life trajectory would be completely different if we didn't have Stone. Stone is our life, and we always tease that he's our greatest teacher. He's taught us how to adapt, how to be flexible, how to be present, how to be resilient, how to push forward, and how to do hard things. I don't know where or who I'd be without him, and I know Wolf feels the same way.